It's good to meet the Richardson hey. family. I, I mean, it, it's not the first time we're meeting. This is like roughly the third time we're meeting each other. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Or fourth. fourth. Yeah, yeah, I think no, probably. No, the tenth time. Hey, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but today we're gonna do an awesome interview mm -hmm. because personally, I don't know who you are. Okay. All I know is the Richardson family. They are in Ghana. What are they doing in Ghana? First of all, I mean, most of them watching us right now don't know who you are. <laughs> My name is Watermaya. Tell me who is starting first. I mean, ladies first. Ladies first. Uh, Tell me who the Richardson family is. Okay, so what am I? Uh, I am Mummy Richardson. Okay. Lovely to meet you, by the way. Mm. AKA Abna Richardson. Mm. And this is Daddy Richardson. Mark Lecole Richardson. And we are the parents of Asada, age 11, Inshira, age two, 8, and Adansia, age 3. You're yeah. currently living in Ghana? We yeah. Are, yes, we made a move. Oh, you made a move? I we thought you were born and raised in Ghana. Ah. Oh, you know what? Maybe my accent gave me away. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we moved back to Ghana in 2019 as a family. Yeah. Where were you before? We were in the UK. But what were you doing in the UK? We were living and... Living, you know, working, hustling, doing know. what people who live in the UK do. So which means you are born and raised in the UK? Yeah. Born, yes. Born in the UK. Lived in Ghana for a few years in our younger years. Mm -hmm. But moved back. I moved back when she was nine. I moved back when I was six. And we've been in the UK ever since. So, yeah. So, I would say that you guys hold UK passport. No, we don't. We do. We also hold Ghanaian passports. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, let me know. You see, I'm from Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A typical Ghanaian. Hey. From the village that, to the extent that I really want to have a UK passport. Yeah. And you had the UK passport and decided to give it away and move to Ghana. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry, yeah? I don't disrespect people like that, but I, I just want to know, yeah? I'm speaking for many Ghanaians. Is everything okay with you people? <laughs> hey, that's right. We, we, we've had the test. We, yeah. We've been cleared. We oh, really? Fine. You're fine. You're Absolutely. fine? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentally, I think we're okay. What, what happened when the awakening clicked was that we realized our ancestry, our DNA was here. And you know they say, if you, if you. Mm. So regardless of the passport that you have, where you've been raised, it's not where your ancestry is from. So we started to wonder what it's like on the outside. You know, our parents were always talking about, oh, if you, if you, we can't wait to go home. These are the things we used to experience at home. And we realized something was missing in our lives. So mm. we thought, let's just make the trip. And also our children were at an age where this can really impact them. So we came when they were of their formative years to see what it was like, where granddad was raised, where mm. granddad's granddad was raised. Mm. And we've got here when we realized the passport that we have, the Ghanaian passport that we hold, it, we hold very the dear to our is. hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is more yeah. like Ghana passport to the world. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you guys now, go get yourself a Ghana passport. Go get it. Yeah, definitely. Sure about that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, don't, don't be misconceived by, you know, what people want on the outside. The grass isn't always greener. That's, wow. yeah, the grass isn't Are always Are you trying easy. to tell me that life in the UK is not that easy? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so, oh, why are you laughing? Oh, <laughs> gosh, no, yeah. You know, like with all things, I say it's a hustle. Mm. It's a hustle. Um, there are certain things that you get which are good and, you know, they're nice. But there's also the flip side to it where, you know, you have to work and mm. you have to keep working. The moment you decide to stop, you start to find that the system, the, the pack of cards start to fall in. Definitely. Let me know the main reason why you decided to give up on the UK and move to Ghana. You know, for us, it was simple. It was the children. We decided that, you know what, we were working, we were working hard, but we wanted to give the children the best opportunity. Mm. We wanted them to come back and do something that mm. we felt would not only impact their lives, but try to do the best for the continent. And you know, like watching what in my videos and just being inspired and oh, wow. knowing that this is where our family's from, we just said, you know what, we don't want to be talking about this change or moaning or complaining about why Ghana and Africa isn't what it is. Let's be part of that change mm. and let's make it happen. Definitely, definitely. And it was a catalyst, like he says. We had the dream, but we started to watch people, especially yourselves, and we have to be so thankful because the things that you've done and what it's actually showed the children is that they too can do it. And when you're away, you realize you're not the king of your own castle. Hmm. So it's almost like you're always a second class citizen and you can sit and complain. But like Michael was saying, you have to be the change you want to see. So we couldn't sit back and watch people come here and, you know, enjoy our resources, enjoy the country, enjoy everything that it has to give, take away what they they take and then take it back to another economy when we can be here impacting the country ourselves. I, I like the fact that you said that uh, you need to be part of the change. You know, one thing that I have noticed that the diaspora complain more than anybody. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? Yeah, oh. definitely. They, they but what, what do you guys complain about? 
I mean, you, you live in the UK, mm -hmm. you're helping UK economy to grow. Uh -huh. You live in the US, you're helping the U, uh, US economy to grow, and you're still complaining. I, I just want to know why do the diaspora complain a lot about things that are happening on the continent? About things that are happening on the continent? You know, sometimes I think it's, it's a mindset. It's a mindset where they're sort of stuck in the sense that they always should be doing better. Mm. And it's always a, I was part of the issue, but now I'm separate. And I'm seeing it as a separate issue over there. Um, so then it's easier to make complaints and to whine and to moan about it. Where you, when you see yourself as part of the issue, or mm. well, you know what, I need to help Africa be better, mm -hmm. then you complain less and you try to find things or ways um, to improve. Now you're in Ghana. I really want to know, I mean, we normally say there are no jobs in Ghana, yeah? Are you working for the government? Or you're working for somebody or you're doing your own thing? Okay, so uh, we've been homeschooling for a long time. And one of the reasons we came to Ghana, actually the main reason we came to Ghana was to impact the next generation. Okay. I think when you realize that you're the solution to the problem, you realize you're not going to be here forever. So you have to instill a legacy in the children that they're going to be able to continue, like mm. a really firm foundation. So we started an empowerment program in the UK where we would teach children critical thinking, entrepreneurship, language, history, wow. yeah, to just make a difference. Teach them about their resources, teach them about the country, the leadership. And then we thought, well, we're over here doing this, but what are we doing for the children back in Africa? We came here and we realized that the education system is very, how can I put it, colonialized. You know, everything is very much um, taken from a Eurocentric uh, point of view, a Eurocentric perspective. And so as well as what they learn, we wanted our children to understand that you're not going to be 20 years old before you find out what bauxite is. You're not going to be 20 years old before you find out what our minerals, what our natural resources can actually do for the country. Mm. So this is what we do full time here and we've started the empowerment program here. It's doing wonderfully well because we find even the language our children don't speak. Whoa. And if you don't speak your language, that means you're not inventing in your language, you're not creating in your language. So all of these things, we just came to really empower the children of tomorrow. But were you yeah. able to learn your language when, they, when you were in the UK? Yes, I had to. I had to because I, I'm not a, a, a shanty, so I didn't grow up speaking cheap. Okay. Mm. But I had to learn. And I said, you know, I'll start learning in the UK because I wanted, when my first child was on the way, I said, you know what, I want Tree to be the main language of the house. And that's not going to happen if I can't speak Tree. So I started learning and from there. Which year was that? That was in 2010. Mm. 2010. So are you trying to tell me that all your kids can speak Tree now? They can. They, they were born speaking it, they can read it and they can write it. Really? Yeah. Will I be able to find out if... They, they, they can do that because, if they you know, could do that I mean I want proofs you know, yeah. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't believe us he yeah 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 us. okay it's I, official I, I they're yeah, around yeah. 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 I'm passing me and baby I'm going to want to swear hey hey yo I want to tell you you know I'm passing me and my papa I'm going to tell you 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 hey what's the tree I'm going to tell you 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 Hey, and I woke up cheese on me. Pasha wine. What's your boobie? I'm a Pasha wine. Hey, you got me to be a boobie. Boobie, I'm a cool mommy. A pie, a coney. Hey, and it's a chestnut. Wait, me, I, I, for real, I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna act as if I know what she's saying. And I said, can, can, can you translate that in English for me? Uh, it means that if you do one thing wrong, then it, it's a wrong thing for everyone. Just, it affects everyone. I don't know what did my mom do to me. <laughs> like these kids are disgracing me. Hi, what's the saying? Hey, yeah, we, we didn't say. I dance here. I dance here. We didn't say. But you said that. But you said that. But you said that. But you doesn't know what to say. I, I'm fully blown away. You know, they, they have the local names, you know. Um, some of us, we don't even want to name our kids the local names. Asida, Inshira, and Adansi. Mm. It's a pleasure to... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> to meet you. I swear, I don't know. Many you pass my... Hey! Yes! Yes! We figure now. Many I just pass my share. Why? I'm going to pass my on point. I'm going to let me understand this, yeah? Yep. You're born in the UK. Yeah. How is life here in Ghana? Like, as, as a young guy, do, do you really have uh, a lot of Ghanaians as friends in here? Quite a few, actually. Quite uh, a few. 
um, a lot of my friends are homeschooled, so a lot of people say that uh, a lot of Ghanaians aren't that homeschooled. But mm. when you, I mean, the majority are in school, but then you'll find one or two which are out, and then after that you can find a group of them, and then they can become your friends for a very long time. How about you? Uh, same for me, uh, since like there's quite a lot of homeschooling groups, so you can go and do things on... So um, definitely you don't, you don't have classmate in terms of um, going to an ordinary school in Ghana. No. Mom and dad teaches you everything in here. Yes. Yeah. Hey, hey, I need to start homeschool today. <laughs> uh, I need to come and apply. Yeah. Is, is, is mommy doing enrollment right now? Because I really want to apply too. <laughs> hey. I'm not sure. You're not sure? Mm -hmm. I, I, I really want to know, yeah, why is it so important to let your kids embrace your language and your culture? Mm. Well, you know what, it's important because as I always say, our skin is our passport. You know, whether we are in the UK, Ghana, Japan, the US, our skin tells a story. And it tells us that we're from somewhere. And we need to know where we're from. We need to know about our language. We need to know about our history, about our culture. And not just ours from our little village, but also from the wider nation and the nations and the continent as a whole. So we said, you know, it's our responsibility to do what we can for our children to ensure they know who they are. Mm. Um, is it Asada? Who's Asada? Asada, did your parents force you to learn the language? No, they didn't actually. Uh, I really enjoy learning the language. I mean, sometimes it's a bit hard to maintain, but you keep on doing it. One day you go out, you speak to someone, amazing time. Yeah, so yeah, I'm quite glad I learned the language. I was definitely not forced. I can reassure you that. You know what, to him, I say he was forced. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm serious about forcing. Because if you don't learn the language, you're not going to eat in our house. <laughs> you have to speak the language. Because you know what, if I reverse the coin and I say, you know what, if your children didn't speak English, would you be okay with it? Would you be cool? No, you would bend over backwards. You would get tutors in. You will get other people in to teach them English. So why don't we take that same attitude and teach them our languages? So yes. We forced them. Chi was the main language in our house. English was secondary. Can I and tell you something? Mm -hmm. Here in Ghana, the school that I attended, mm -hmm. if you speak your own language, you consider it to be a vernacular. Mm -hmm. And considering it to be vernacular, you have to pay a fine for speaking your own language. Don't worry, I'll give you extra pocket money, pay the fine. <laughs> <laughs> so which means that you have a message for African parents living in Africa and those African parents living abroad. Yeah. What's the message for them? The message is, you know what, we are who we are. We need to tell our children, not just through cheap words, but through our actions, that our language, our culture, our history and our heritage matter. Do something, teach them. The same way some of these fathers love football, love soccer, show their children, buy t-shirts for them. Do the same for your culture, for your heritage, for your history, and for the continent. And Africa by itself will change and be a better place. If you had one thing to change about Africa, what would it be? Put in work in your children. I mean, one, my thing is, you know what, the next generation, Destination Africa talks about the next generation. Guys, we have to plug in. One thing about living in the UK, it's opened my eyes and it allowed me to see how other cultures, other people from Europe, put time and effort in their children. I haven't met one French family living anywhere in the world that hasn't taught their children how to speak French. Not one. I haven't met one Spanish family that have taken their children to live in Ghana or anywhere else in the world and haven't taught them to speak Spanish. But we do it and we don't think about it. We don't have a plan for our children. It's like, oh, you know, we'll get there somehow, but we're not purposeful about our plan. And my message will be, be purposeful about raising your children, about the next generation, because they're the ones who are going to take care of us when we're old. And they're the ones who African shoulders will stand on. So that's my message. Mm, you have something to say? Yeah, just to add to what he said, I think everything has a cycle, and that cycle has a legacy. And when you plant an orange seed into the ground, it has roots, but it always comes up as an orange fruit. If it comes up as something else, then you're almost teaching it to hate itself. So when it goes into the ground, it comes up as an orange fruit, and people recognize it as an orange fruit. So let's teach our children to really love and appreciate and embrace who they are. Mm. I really want to know, yeah, moving back to Ghana, definitely there are challenges, right? Mm. Uh, let me know, uh, what are the challenges that you guys face as a family living in Ghana? 
I think for me, there's probably two things. The first thing is transparency and honesty. Sometimes when you speak to somebody and you say, oh, where are you? They know for what they're like, they're probably, I'm one of, I'm one hey, of them. oh, there you go. I'm one of them. What day? Tell the truth, tell the camera. I'm, I, I said I'm one of them, you know? Woo <laughs> We've been waiting for Wade for goodness. How long, children? Two Since years? Friday. No, two years? don't two be years. nice to Uncle Wade. Two, 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 two years, two years, two years ahead. Two years. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, you know you're nowhere near us. And yeah. I think, you know, all jokes aside, I think that's something that we as a, as a people can, can do to mm. just instill the level of trust mm. and, you know, build that kind of confidence in each other. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then I think the second thing is really taking away who we are, like our cultures, our traditions, our heritage, and just superimposing somebody else's. Because everywhere you go now, children want to be somebody else, they want to sound like somebody else, they want to eat different food. And sometimes I do look at us and think, where are we going to be in 20 years if we continue like this? So I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges. And I think as a parent now, I look at it from a parent's perspective. perspective yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So I think, yeah, that's my biggest challenge. Um, the doom souls, all of that we can do with. We're home, we're here, you know, we're dealing with it, it's fine. It's more the long-term psychological effects that if we don't change, what would that really be doing to us as a people? Is it expensive um, to live in Ghana? Yes, you have to plan. You have to plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And I think before we came, what we did was we looked at the prices of everything from bills to cost of living to how you would eat all of that how you would feed your family because in ghana there's no credit system you know back in the uk you can live off a credit system and just hope that by the end of the, the month you'll pay off the interest here if you don't have you can't eat you don't eat, you don't eat. so this, these are the things that you know you have to really put into perspective you have to quantify before you say let me get up and come a business plan Make sure that you know your plan. You're making the right connections. I think over here, connections are everything. You can acquire all the knowledge that you want. If you don't know the right people, you're not going to get very far. So yeah, make sure that you got the right people when you go here. We we tried. <laughs> and, and then you, you got to do your it. best to, to to make the most. Of, of yeah. What you have. So, yeah. You know, my thing is, you can decide before you come. You know, some people are born into situations, mm. but when you're moving from another place back home. You decide how you want to live. You mm. decide whether you want to do so or not. You know, but with all the extra perks comes extra pounds, dollars, CDs, Naira, whatever. So you just have to decide what's comfortable. You cut your coat according to your size. And, and I have to say, before Kafra away, before um, we round off, uh, we have to say a massive thank you to my dad because I don't think the move would have been easy if, yeah, if he wasn't around. You know, he's provided us with most things like. A, yeah, a home, advice, you name it, he's been there and really, really grateful to him. So, thank you, Daddy. Just saying thank you, Daddy. You're watching this video on behalf <laughs> if you're watching. of the family, I say thank you too. Oh. Because without you, they won't listen to my message of telling them to come back home. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for talking thank to me. You. Thank, thank you. you.